month video. We haven't done one in quite some time. Uh, today we're going to dig into a topic that's very important in the wine world and something I'm asked about quite a bit. We're going to take a look at different stemware and how much it really matters on, on a wine in terms of the way that it smells and the way that it tastes. In a day and age where you can buy literally wine glasses for a dollar at the dollar store or literally pay hundreds of dollars for a stem, where do you even start, right? So today I'm going to drink one wine out of these four different glasses and we're going to talk a little about the differences in the way the wine presents itself. Um, now, there are a few key things that I look at when I look at, at stems. Uh, one is the, the, the shape of the bowl and the size and the thickness of the rim. The, the idea here is you want the thinnest rim possible to keep from uh, kind of obstructing the flow of the wine onto your palate, okay? Now with thinness comes a lack of durability as well, so you have to be careful. Uh, and then wine glasses can be made in either glass or in crystal. In crystal, you tend to get a little bit more ability to spin them very thin, but you lose some of the durability, okay? Perhaps the most important thing that, that I look in um, is the, the thickness of the rim and making sure that it's not, not too thick. Uh, secondarily, stems. I am definitely in the no stemless can. I want stems on my glasses for the main reason that I don't want to hold the wine, by, wine glass by the bowl. If you have any uh, oils or lotions um, or, or fragrances on your hands, in a porous glass like crystal, it's going to soak through into the wine. And even in a glass that isn't porous, those aromas will kind of come up and over and, and kind of dominate the wine. And then if nothing else, it's just unsightly to have a glass with you know, multiple fingerprints all over it through the evening. Uh, and you know, I, I like to, to be able to swirl uh, from the stem as well and from the base. Uh, and then lastly, holding a wine actually will warm the wine up if you have your hand on the bowl, which is not something you want. So uh, definitely you want stems. Um, the size of the bowl, uh, you'll see some different shapes and sizes here. We'll talk about that as we get in. Um, and then lastly, durability. I talked a little bit. Uh, crystal versus glass. Glass a little bit more thick, uh, not quite as, as, um, as clear, uh, but certainly more durable. Whereas crystal, some are machine washer or dishwasher safe, some are hand wash only. Just something to think about. Uh, the size of the opening as well from a maintenance standpoint. Can you get your hand in there to really polish these? Or is it kind of like this where it's going to be really hard to get in there and, and make sure you're, you're, you're polishing them really nice and drying them completely? Uh, I've spent many nights cleaning 12 to 15 wine glasses by hand, and um, it's not always, not always fun. Okay, let's jump in. We're going to drink a Ryan Cochran 2014 Solomon Hills Pinot Noir. I think Pinot is a great wine to, to, to do this with because it's, it's a red wine, um, but it's very aromatic and it has a lot of nuanced characteristics. I think we'll be able to pick out some differences. So we're going to start with, this is literally a dollar store glass bought for one dollar at a dollar general. Let's uh, give this a whirl. Well, first thing I see here, very thick rim. In fact, it kind of comes out and flares out a little bit. It's so thick on the rim. So I'm interested to see how this is going to deliver to the palate. But let's take a look at the nose. It's got kind of a musty, almost antiseptic note on it. I'm hoping that's not indicative of the quality of the wine. It's more the way it's presenting in the stem. Uh, there's some darker fruit there. But I'm mostly getting kind of a dusty uh, character. Uh, let's, let's jump in. The next one is a uh, Riedel Venum. This is uh, about a $25 stem. Uh, Riedel is known for making variety specific stems. So they have a Pinot Noir glass. This is the, the Bordeaux stem, which is used for Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot. They have Zinfandel, Syrah, Riesling, Chardonnay, you name it, they've got a stem for it. Uh, so this is the Riedel Venum uh, Pinot Noir glass. And first thing you notice, much thinner on the rim. And you can see the shape of the bowl is much different, right? It kind of comes out and then funnels back up to the top with a much smaller opening. Yeah, an incredible difference on the nose. Whereas this kind of had a dusty antiseptic nose, this is just pure and clean, bright red fruit. A little bit of, a little bit of earthiness, but just a ton of, of red fruit nose, tart cherry. Really, really different. Really big difference. Okay, the next glass is a step up. This is my, personally, my favorite stem. Uh, this is the Gabriel glass. Uh, this is the uh, hand-blown edition. They also make a machine-made uh, edition. This is $55 a stem. It is paper thin. It is so delicate. I had two. I broke one. I'm, I'm hesitant to buy another because they really are that easy to break. They're paper thin, super lightweight. I mean, you, can, you, can, you feel like you can just crack the stem by touching it. Um, but let's give this a shot. And again, an incredible difference from the Riedel. Uh, much darker fruit notes, much more earthy. Black tea. Um, 
that forest floor, that earthiness coming through a little bit more. This this actually smells like it's going to be a much more rich wine than it does out of the Riedel. The Riedel kind of enhances, I think, the prettiness of the wine. This uh, enhances a little bit of the, the heft of the wine or the weight of the wine, perhaps. The last one is the Nachtman. Nachtman is a crystal glass. You can see this is almost an oversized bowl, very, very big. Uh, and it kind of comes in and then flares back out. And it reminds me of the Riedel Sommelier series Pinot Noir glass, which has a very similar shape to this. Um, but it's about $75 a stem. I don't have one of those, but I had this Nachtman. I thought we'd try this. Much more room to swirl with, for sure. Yeah, I like the, the last two better. This, um, it kind of has some of that dustiness that I got out of this first one, to be honest, and it's just a little bit, you can smell it from back here because it is such a, a, a big bowl. But there's nothing that really focuses the aromas. It's just kind of all over the place, and you have to dig around a little bit more. Yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see how it drinks. Uh, I like the, the other two better. So let's, uh, let's see how they, they taste coming out of this. Again, the dollar store glass. Interesting. The delivery of this, again, very chunky. You can feel it kind of coming up and over and then splashing into your mouth, not slowly flowing into your mouth. And it delivers it almost under your tongue and really kind of, it makes it a kind of an astringent flavor. It's a, it's a very tart wine um, coming out of this glass. Uh, interesting delivery. Let's try the Riedel. Yeah, much different. Again, this delivers seamlessly onto kind of the, the front to middle of your tongue, but all the way across from the right to the left. It covers the whole part of that tongue, and it, it's a prettier wine coming out of this, uh, just in terms of the, it's not as kludgy of a delivery, but it also hits your tongue kind of evenly in that front part. Uh, emphasizes some of the minerality, um, some of that tart red fruit for sure, uh, more, than, more than this one does. Let's try the Gabriel Glass. It's amazing. I mean, the point here, it does present a different wine. Much different delivery on the Gabriel glass. Whereas this one was a little bit more broad across the front to middle of the tongue, this is a little bit more linear from the middle to the back of the tongue and doesn't kind of spread out as much and fan out across the tongue. It, it's really kind of that straight line up the middle. And again, it emphasizes a little bit more of that fruit and that earthy characteristic and the, and the spice. Whereas you get a little bit more tartness out of this, you get a little bit more richness out of the Gabriel glass in terms of how it presents. Let's try the Nachman. The Nachman, I would say, is kind of a somewhat in between this. It hits the front of the tongue, and then it just kind of explodes out into the back of the tongue. It, it, it coats the entire tongue. There's nothing really focused about the delivery here. And so it's kind of a mix in between the two. You get a little bit of that tartness up front, a little bit of the richness on the, on the, on the back part of the tongue once it spreads out. Um, kind of different. Um, you know, and I'm not to say which one is right or wrong. Uh, I just think it's interesting. You know, people ask me all the time, does stemware matter? The answer is absolutely it does. It changes the smell of a wine. It changes the taste of a wine in some ways. Um, and it's all variety specific. So my, uh, my challenge to you is to take a wine that you enjoy, grab four different random glasses out of your cabinet, and try them side by side and see the, the differences. Um, and then when you go to buy stems on your own, obviously, you know, keep in mind durability. Uh, I have a $2 glass upstairs, like I said, that I use for, uh, for parties that's lead crystal and dishwasher safe. Uh, but if I'm drinking something really nice and it's just me, I'm going for the Gabriel glass for sure. Um, this also, Riedel uh, Venom, is, is my standby. I have six of these and I think I have eight of the Bordeaux's and this is kind of my, my, my standard daily daily stem. So guys, as we say at Ben 412, here's to expanding your palate, drinking new regions, drinking new varieties. Cheers.